Hello there, how are you today? Thanks very much for dropping in. I'm Vinny. Now I like uh, traditional folding knives and whenever I want to buy a knife I go online, I go on YouTube and I, I search for perhaps somebody who's using the knife who will tell you if it's good or bad or worth buying. But invariably it would seem nobody on YouTube or very very few are actually using their knives. So when I started my channel uh, I decided I was going to do things differently. I wanted to do my best to show the knife in work and show what it can do. But when you go to make a video it's, it's not quite as simple as you might think. What are you to do? Have you to carry the camera everywhere you go during the course of the day? This is going to get tedious for me. Also simply standing there looking gormless and cutting on a stick isn't good enough either. Now some months ago I made a series of three videos called Can You Use a Folding Knife as a Survival Knife? And the reason I made these was because I had watched and listened to so much nonsense about folding knives on YouTube that I just wanted to show what somebody can actually do with a folding knife. And I said to myself, that's that, I've made my point, let's move on. But when I thought about it, I had a bit of an epiphany. It's actually an excellent way uh, to showcase a knife at work, show what it can do, and show if it's any good. So this is the brainwave I've come up with. Uh, I've decided to take each knife, go out in the woods, build a basic shelter, uh, make fire, process some meat if I have it, and do an overnight stay in my shelter. So I think this will be a good test of each knife. So the first knife we're going to try out is this little fellow. It's the Genzo model G725-M. Okay. Well, this is a small, cheap uh, Chinese folding knife. It's um, a traditional stockman pattern. And I'll give you a bit of a close-up of this, okay? So here's our little Genzo. Um, the two small blades have a cutting edge one and a half inches. This uh, clip point is two and one eighth inches. It's made from four one one six stainless steel. This costs eight dollars online with two dollars for delivery, so a ten dollar knife. Let's see how this one fares out. All right, so I'm going to make a, a lean-to type shelter, and this pole here. I'm going to use my main beam, my main support beam as it were. This is a piece of hazel. As usual, I'm only going to use hazel and willow because these very rapidly regrow. It does not damage uh, the tree and it's very much a renewable resource. I'm going to zoom in and show you uh, a close-up of the cutting this time, okay? Let's see how this goes. There's the Ganzo. Now. Watch out for dead wood. main problem here is access. I'm kind of snookered with this tree, but we'll get there. Go left-handed. We don't like left-handed. There we go, so this will be our, our main 
support beam as it were okay now these top pieces are a good bit lighter so they'll be easy enough Little Ganzo is not the most amazing cutter I've ever come across, but not doing too bad for a very small knife. What do you expect for ten dollars? Right, job done. That piece of music you just listened to was uh, uh, Eamon and Knick, or Ned of the Hills, and it was performed by my French friend Emmy Perrin. Uh, Emmy is a young um, singer-songwriter. She has her own YouTube channel, and she writes and performs all her own music and songs. She's already made an album, and the proceeds of the album have gone to help orphanages in Nepal. So she's a nice little person. She's using her music to do some good in the world. So why don't you head over, have a look at some of her videos, and maybe help her channel out. I'll hopefully put a link in the description. Okay guys, thank you. To use as bindings or lashings uh, to tie my, my shelter together, I'm going to uh, simply use brambles. If there's any amount of them here, they're still fairly green and pliable. I know there are many ways to uh, process these. But I'm simply going to use them as they are. I've got gloves on, and if you were lost, you wouldn't have time for faffing about. So I'm just simply going to use them as they are. 
and we have a, an extremely plentiful supply here I'm going to get some nice long green ones and we'll see how that goes okay one thing I learned from making my last shelter was that uh, thatch is extremely efficient I use rushes to thatch that shelter I have none available here or nothing else that I can see that might be good for thatch but I have some of this uh, Rose Bay Willow Herb quite an extensive plot of it here I don't know if it's good for thatch but we're going to find out so I'll collect some of that Okay, so I've chosen my site. I have a nice dry level site. I'm going to use these to support my shelter. Um, I've got one hazel pole and some willows. I've got a good bundle of uh, willow herb, hopefully enough to be going on with. I have a couple of fork sticks, my main cross beam, and I have a good bundle of briars here already ready to go. So let's get on with it. I brought you over just to show you how I fared out with the bramble lashings. They're not too bad. It's not too difficult to work with either. Now these are quite green and quite pliable. And they've worked, they're pretty, pretty tight. And the fact that they have little spines on them also adds to the grip. So they've worked out quite well. Now I have this ready, I need to get a roof over my head. Okay, so the, the shelter is coming along pretty well. I just brought you back here, I wanted to show you one thing that I found very useful. I'm sure some of you know this already, but it's new to me. I found that by putting a basic point on the bramble, I was able to use it like a needle to sew. I can push it through the thatch and sew with it. As I, as I say, I'm sure some of you know this already, but it's new to me and I just thought it worth sharing, okay? Okay, so we've got the shelter finished. Such as it is. I'll take you around the back and give you a view. And this is it from the back. Uh, towards the end I was running out of uh, willow herb, so I managed to find, s for, for the top of it, across here, I managed to find a few rushes and some grass and uh, I used the tops of my willow branches to bulk it up. So we managed to, we just barely had enough. So that's it from behind. So our next job is to come up with a bed of some kind. Also I think 
I probably won't need it, but if, if, if I want it, I could put some kind of loose grass here that would hang down and give some more shade. But I think we're well enough covered as it is. So next job is the bed. Okay guys, I hope the lights work out. This is the first time I've filmed by night. After a beautiful day, we had about three hours of rain and we sat it out uh, thinking it was just a shower. This didn't leave as much time to gather wood. I should have got this earlier in the day and I should have picked some dry wood. So I'm going to try and light a, a twig bundle with my lighter, see how this goes. Everything is damp.
So guys, that's my shelter with the Ganzo 725-M. I learned a few lessons last night. Uh, the first, if there's any threat of rain, uh, get your tender and kindling and enough dry wood to be going on with. Get that secured. One of the first things to get. Also, the Morris Kohensky stick bed is not bad at all. I've slept on the ground before and this is much better. But I, I, I would need more padding on it. I needed to get some leaves or some some dry grass or something like that but as I say we had three hours of rain and everything was soaked so that was a non-runner but otherwise it worked out pretty well so is the Ganzo 725-M the best thing to slice bread no it's not I'll show you why First thing I have to say, it doesn't slice very well. I have other knives that bite, bite into wood and keep biting. This bites in and stops. Edge retention is poor, that's all I can say. I had to uh, constantly sharpen it. And also, hopefully you can see, there's a gap coming here. And quite a lot of play in the blade. These were all tight when I started. All of the blades. All of the blades have some play now. But still, I don't think anybody's going to buy this little knife for um, for heavy use. But really and truly, uh, this would be good for opening letters or, or opening packages, stuff like that. It's not for the outdoors, not for the countryside. So, that was the Ganzo 725-M in action. And if you can build an effective shelter, with a dinky little cheap Chinese knife like this. Do you really need these $400 massive knives that they're, they're, they're pushing on people? Or is it just clever marketing? You can think about that. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.